good morning, everyone. How are we doing? Good. I want to welcome everyone this morning to worship at our um, uh, on campus here in Tacoma, and I want to welcome everyone online. Happy Father's Day. Okay, good. We're like, what? Hey, can we just say thank you to our dads? Yeah, dads and grandpas and those who are fatherly in our lives. And, um, and I know, um, you know, Father's Day sometime for some folks like me is kind of a weird day because maybe dad wasn't a great dad. But in all, in, in all these things, we, we are reminded that our Heavenly Father loves us. Amen? Amen. Through all these, these times in our lives, our God walks with us. He holds us close. And, um, and so that's why we're here to worship today. And so I'm going to invite you to stand. And um, as we come before the Lord in worship today, let us welcome our Heavenly Father. God, we thank you that you are the best father we could ever have, Lord, that you give us the ultimate example of what fatherly love should be. And Lord, you, you found us in our sinfulness, Lord, when we had broken re the relationship with the garden and we deserved punishment. Lord, you came up with an incredible plan to restore us to yourself, and that's what we sing about that's, what, that's why we come to worship you today, our Abba, our Daddy, our Father, whose love never fails, whose heart is huge and whose love is as wide as the east is from the west, from the north is to the south. I thank you, God, for those men in our lives, Lord, who were fathers to us, whether they were our earthly dad or grandpa or Maybe it was an uncle or a coach or a teacher, Lord, who poured into our lives. We thank you for that influence. We pray today as we worship God that we would be fatherly to others, Lord, that we would model the kind of love that you modeled for us. We love you, God. We begin our time together in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's sing this beautiful hymn. Stop. 
others love for us how vast beyond our measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure well good morning everybody Good morning. It's good to welcome you here. I'm Pastor Tim. And indeed, the Father's love, God the Father, is seen in the person and work of Jesus, our Savior, who comes to earth, who dies on the cross to forgive your sin, to pay the debt and penalty of your separation from God and mine, and brings us together. And that's the new life that we celebrate here today. And just In just a moment, we're going to share communion, but first I want to share this verse from Galatians chapter 3. Now faith has come, and we are no longer under a guardian, for in Jesus Christ we are all made sons and daughters of God through faith. For as many of you who were baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. Let's prepare our hearts to receive this meal and just bow your heads with me and reflect on these questions today. Uh, Do you believe that you need Jesus because we were born sinful, separated, in need of the love of God? Do you trust that Jesus brings us back to the Father, that by his suffering and death on the cross and his resurrection on Easter morning, that that is for you? Do you trust that his forgiveness is your forgiveness, that there's forgiveness for all people, but yet individually that we are loved and valued and forgiven. And do we desire to live and love more like Jesus by faith through the power of his Holy Spirit that lives in us? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, indeed, it's by your power that we say yes to all these things. Lord, forgive us in our thoughts and our words and our deeds. Renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your ways and live lives that look more and more like your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The great news is that Almighty God in his love and his mercy has given his son Jesus to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let God's children say, amen. Amen. Let's share communion this morning. Jesus, the night he was betrayed, took bread. He gave thanks, gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body that's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and eat the body of Christ that's given for you. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. So do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink the blood of Christ. It's given for you. See some kids. If you have kids at home, you can place a hand on them, and we pray, Holy Spirit, continue to grow their faith and trust in Jesus every day until they see you face to face in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. We have a Father who invites us to run to Him um, no matter what we're facing in life. And so this morning we want to introduce a new song, um, and this is how the chorus goes. Run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, 
My soul needs a friend So I'll run to the Father again and again and again and again
Father God, thank you for the love that you continually show us every day. For your mercies come anew and your grace is always enough. You are our heavenly Father and God, we thank you that no matter how we may fail each other, you love us perfectly. You look at us with the Father's eyes and you love us with the Father's heart. As we run to you and your mercies and you welcome us with open arms, God, we thank you for that unfailing love and that prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, because of his love, we proclaim the faith that we have in Jesus this morning through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'm Dream Hoff, the kids and women's minister here at Our Savior. I want to welcome you to our children's message. Our kids' ministry focuses on confidence, and today's Bible adventure features a man named Gideon, who was pretty much a scaredy cat until God helped him realize that because of God's strength, he could have confidence that his ordinary self could do great things. Carrie, will you tell what happened and I'll try to act it out? Sure. A while after God gave Joshua and the Israelites victory over Jericho, which we talked about last week, the Israelites disobeyed God a lot. So God let their enemies, the Midianites, take over the land. Gideon was so afraid that he hid from them, but God had a plan to use Gideon as an ordinary man like you and me to bring victory back to God's people. Me? Yeah, Gideon found this hard to believe and kept asking God for signs that God was going to come through for him. For example, one time Gideon said to God, I know you promised to save Israel through me, but if it's really true, then I'll put this fleece of sheep's wool outside overnight. And if there's morning dew only on the fleece and not on the ground around it, I'll know that you'll do what you said. And sure enough, the next morning, the ground was dry and the fleece was wet. But Gideon still lacked confidence and asked God for one more sign, that he put the fleece out overnight again and this time, the fleece would be dry and the ground would be wet with dew. God was patient with Gideon and made this happen also. And finally, Gideon believed that God would use him in the way that he said he would. Now, for the battle, Gideon set out with an army of 32,000 men, but God said that was too many soldiers. So he had Gideon send home all but 300 men. Again, Gideon asked for a sign from God that he would have success. And again, God patiently gave it to him. So Gideon followed God's direction and had the men bring not their weapons, but torches inside empty jars and trumpets. Then they snuck up to the Midianite camp, surrounded it, and at the same time shouted, blew their trumpets, and smashed the jars to reveal the light from the torches. God put the Midianite army into such a panic that they turned on each other with swords or they ran away. Only God could have brought the victory in that seemingly impossible way. Thank you, Carrie. You are That's welcome. That's how God led an underdog, an ordinary doubtful guy, and 300 soldiers to defeat an entire enemy army. 
Our bottom line for today is that God can use you no matter what. Remember last week when we talked about how God's plan is always the best plan? Well, His plan is to use you and me to do amazing things for Him and others. And we all have an important purpose whether we realize it or not and whether we feel worthy or not. Gideon wasn't sure he was the right guy for the job, but God used him to do big things and God can do big things through us too. Let's pray. You can repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for being a God. Thank you for being a God. Who uses ordinary people. Who uses ordinary people. Like Gideon and me. Like Gideon and me. To do extraordinary things. To do extraordinary things. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For more Bible fun and conversation starters with your family, head to the section called Sunday School at Home in today's Kid News email. Happy Father's Day to all those dads, grandpas, uncles, and others who love and care for kids. You are so important. Have a great week, everyone. morning. Our text today, it's from Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to read some selected verses in here that uh, pertain to, to fathers and, uh, and being fatherly. And it starts this way, verse 21, it says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any blemish, but holy and blameless. And in the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hateth their own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. And this is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eyes on you, but as slaves to Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. Because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. At this time, we're going to dismiss our, our, our kids um, for Kids Connect, so uh, if you are... Uh, kids fifth grade and, and younger, this is a time for you, so your leaders are in the back, and you can, you can head to them, and they will take you away. <laughs> Does that sound bad? <laughs> All right, we're going to have to work on that. They will walk alongside you. They will, I don't know. I'll, I'll do some work on that next time. I'm going to do that much better, all right? I promise you. <laughs> Let's pray. I need help. <laughs> Lord, uh, thank, you for your, thank you for your word that just gives us such clarity on truth and in grace. God, we pray that um, you would guide our hearts and our minds and, and the words that are spoken, that it would honor um, what it is that you speak to us. God, help us to hear and listen and to follow your way. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, um, happy Father's Day. It is an honor uh, to, to preach on Father's Day. Uh, it is 
And, and it's not because, because I am a father. Um, it's, it's because I, I can look out from here and like there are just so many men that I have around me and in our church that I just like revere. Uh, I just, I learn stuff from you all the time about how to father. Uh, there's things that, you know, I'm, I'm watching and I'm, I'm seeing how you handle things. I'm, you know, there's some things I'm like, I'm not there yet, but I know that one's around the bend. And so I need to, I need to study up a bit. Uh, and there are just, you know, there are just men in this place that are fatherly towards me. And, and I appreciate you guys so much. Um, you're a blessing to me and my family and my neighbors and, and anyone else who has to encounter me. Um, and so just maybe simply just starting a day with, uh, you know, thank you to, to my own dad, to my own father, and to, to all the men that are fatherly towards me. Um, you, are, you are much appreciated and uh, you're a greater blessing than you, you know. Now, isn't there something with Father's Day that just brings out a lot of thoughts and feelings and emotions and memories? I mean, maybe, maybe it brings up memories of, of some really uh, wonderful times together or some really cherished moments that you had with your father or, um, or with your kids. And, and that's all, that's just what you think about. Uh, maybe maybe you, you have thoughts and, and feelings of, well, a dad that might not have been very present or, or a relationship that was really rough or non-existent. And, and it's, a, it's a, a bit of a sadness. It's a, it's a bit of a, a hole. Uh, maybe there's, it, you know, Father's Day brings about the feelings of, of knowing that, you know, there's a, I, I have a father that, that's no longer walking the earth with me anymore. And, and just uh, that sense of like, man, I just miss them. Maybe yeah, at Father's Day, you think about, you know, some of the other men in your life that have just become fatherly to you, that have been so critical in caring for you and helping you learn your way. And there, is, there are so many emotions and feelings from Father's Day. Maybe, oh, maybe it's, you know, fatherhood is, is a, um, an unrealized dream. Maybe it's, you know, you, it's something you're like, man, I, I wish we had a kid. Um, and it's just an unrealized dream. And there's, there's so many thoughts and feelings that, that happen around days like Father's Day um, and Mother's Day. Uh, these familial holidays. Um, and it's because of this, because we ascribe much about who we are and where we fit and what we do from our fathers. There's much about who we are and where we fit and what we do that we ascribe from our fathers because they tell us part of the story of who we are. They tell us, you know, a story of where we fit in and how we're a part of something bigger than just ourselves. It's so fitting that the Lord is known as Father. And what does the Lord do? The Lord tells us a bigger, grander story than just ourselves. That there's something bigger that we're a part of that he invites us into and he helps us understand who we are and where we fit and what we do in life. Throughout the sermon, we're gonna come back to this coming phrase, and we say this kind of in a broad sense, not a, not a very specific one, but a broad sense. But, but being fatherly is about what you do with imperfection, not perfection. Being fatherly is about what you do with imperfection, not perfection. Perfection's kind of one of those tricky things. Sometimes it, it feels like, well, I want to do things as best as possible. And that can so easily morph from, I want to do things as best as I can, to 
Well, if it's not perfect, it's not worth it. Or if I can't be perfect in this, then it's, it's not valuable to anyone else or to me. And this is one of those phrases we're gonna come back to throughout this message because being fatherly is so much about what we do in, with imperfection, not perfection, not a perfect performance. Because being fatherly is more about being with than doing exceptionally well. I'm not saying that doing well doesn't matter, but being with is what being fatherly is more about. And we need need this because the world, the world is longing for more fathers who resemble the father. The world is longing for more fathers who resemble the father, who are godly, who, who, live and lead sacrificially and and love without conditions. And they find just an enormous sense of joy in that and purpose in it. The world is longing for more fathers who resemble the father. And it's not a new problem. This is something that has gone on for all of time. I mean, even in scripture we see this. Paul writes this. I'm writing you this not to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children. Even if you had 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. For this reason, I have sent you Timothy, my son, whom I love, who is faithful to the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. And speaking about the Lord, this is what the prophet Hosea writes. He says, for in you the fatherless find compassion. In you the fatherless find compassion. The heart of the Lord is right here. The fatherless find compassion. We also see this when we we look in Psalm. This instruction here, defend the weak and the fatherless, uphold the cause of the poor and oppressed, rescue the weak and the needy, and deliver them from the hands of the wicked. I hope as you hear this, you hear this not with a sense of guilt. This isn't said with a sense of guilt. It's a, call, it's a calling to something of great significance is what it is. It's not a, it's not a, hey, you know what, Dad? You're doing all right, but let's pick it up. (laughs) It's not the, hey, this is all, this is pretty good, but it's just pretty good. This is not guilt, what scripture speaks to about being fatherly. It's a, it's a calling up. It's a calling to great significance. It's a calling of the Lord inviting you to be part of what he's doing in the world. We need more fatherly, godly, fatherly men. We just do. And, and they're in our midst. And it's not just young people, right? It's not just, it's not just kids. It's people of all ages need a fatherly role in their life. You know, <clears throat> there's a, a quote um, that um, the pastor leader, Andy Stanley, says often. He says, Um, Do for one what you can't for many. Um, Do for one what you can't for many. And I think this applies to this call to being fatherly really well. You don't have to be everything to everybody. You don't have to, you know, take on every friend of your kids. You don't have to, you know, be that person for every person in your neighborhood. 
but do for one or a few what you can't for many. Be fatherly for someone. It, you, don't need, you don't need to take, I'm, I'm not asking you to like, hey, I got a list of things I got to do here on Father's Day now type thing. <laughs> but being fatherly, it's about what you do with imperfection, not perfection. In the scriptures, if we just look at um, what we just read through in, in Ephesians chapter five, if you're there, I'm just gonna pick out points that we hear in this. Um, we hear about being rooted in reverence for Christ, that of everything that follows and is spoken there is rooted in an honor and a reverence for the Christ. It talks about the husband is the head, and this isn't saying he's a sole decision maker. Um, this when this is spoken of in, in Greek, I, I've, I've heard and read on this, that it is, it is more in like a military sense and being at the head of the charge and being the one that is saying, I will willingly be the one that will, that will put myself at the greatest risk for the love of the body. Um, and so it's not, it's not this, you know, hanging out back and making decisions only type thing and everyone else does everything. It's, it's leading with that sacrificial, unconditional love and care. Uh, we talk in here about, you know, loving your wife as Christ loved the church. Uh, that's, that's a big deal. That's important. Um, verse four, by the it, it talks about don't provoke your children to anger. Um, hey, kids, like, can I just tell you, that if you're in like a tense moment with your dad and you bring this passage up, it doesn't really go well. <laughs> I, I tried this when I was a teenager and I'd started reading the Bible a little bit and I found this verse, I was like, oh, that's good. Um, because it doesn't talk about me, but it can impact me. And those are the best verses, right? The ones that are like, hey, it, it'll have a really beneficial impact for me, but it doesn't actually apply to me. It's like, yeah, I want that verse. And um, so, you know, my dad and I we were kind of having a tense moment and, and I brought this up. I was like, well, the Bible says don't exasperate your children, dad. And um, it didn't go real well. <laughs> go figure. <laughs> but... Don't provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Show them the way of Jesus. Being fairly, showing the way of Jesus lived. Again, it's not a performance. It's not about perfection. It's about what we do with the imperfection in this. Um, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. Talking about our relationships and in, in, in work. Um, serve as you're serving the Lord. It's awesome. That's great. I think this verse in 1 Corinthians sums all of this up really well. It says, follow, Paul writes, says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Now, you know what's not in these verses there's nothing in here about perfection. There's nothing in here about performance and grades. There's nothing in here about being everything to all sorts of people. It's not in there. And this is probably, this section in Ephesians, this is probably the most like um, exhaustive list of instructions for fathers it's not, perfection isn't in there. Not needing to impact everybody. That's good news, right? Like, that's really good news. There's a saying that Paul has in 2 Corinthians. He says, if anyone is in Christ, they're a new creation. Through faith, through baptism, in Jesus Christ, in his life, death, and resurrection, you are made new. God is making all things new, and he invites us to be part of it. He invites us to be part of what it is that he's doing. 
Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Paul is not saying, I've got it down. He's saying, but follow me because I'm following the Father. Being fatherly, it's about what you do with imperfection, not perfection. So where do we go from here? What are, what are some ideas of things that um, we, can, we can practically apply some of this with? Uh, the first one is this, just start. That's it? I know, that's what you pay for, right? Stuff like this. <laughs> Real wisdom. Um, but just start. It's so important, like just starting. You don't, you don't have to plan it out and have this elaborate, like, man, this is the 18 steps to fatherly success. Um, I don't even know if that exists, but who has the time to read that or would read it? I mean, it, just start. You don't, need to, you don't need to have it all figured out. Just start. It's so important to just start. Second thing is that this phrase, we use this during the generation series, it's never too late, it's never too early. It's never too late, it's never too early. Perhaps you have a, a strained relationship um, with someone that you, you've, you're fatherly towards or with one of your own sons or daughters, and it just feels like, man, this is, it's too late. Or I missed the boat. It's never too late. It's never too late. Or maybe you have, you know, um, like babies around you, and there's, uh, young, or, you know, either in your own house or, or, or in a friend's house, and, and you're like, I mean, that's, that's cute and all, but let me know when they can talk and have a conversation. <laughs> Start early. It's never too early. It's never too early. Some of those conversations you might be waiting on just won't happen if you don't start early. It's never too late, it's never too early. All right, next one is this. I'm sorry, forgive me. This like works 99% of the time. Um, in your imperfection, I'm sorry, forgive me. It, all, it like almost always works. Just, hey, you know what? I, I thought it was a good idea and it, it was a dumb idea and it didn't work or I, honestly, I didn't think about it at all and, and I'm, I just didn't even think about it. I'm sorry, forgive me. Now, like this doesn't fix everything, but this, this, this moves the ball down the, down the field a little bit. It's so important. It's part of being fatherly is, is letting others know, hey, when I messed up, I messed up. Letting them know it's, and by doing this, this is actually like exemplifying and, and giving the example of, of that it is about what I do with the imperfections. It isn't about perfection. <clears throat> we got, this one, tell them everything they are instead of everything they aren't. This is really important. You know, you can do this today. Tell, the, tell your, your fathers, the people that have been, are fatherly in your life, tell them everything they are. And you know what? You don't even have to just do this on Father's Day. Like, this actually works every day. Um, Believe it or not, it's really useful. But most people don't know the impact they have on you. They just don't. Tell people what, why they matter. Tell them everything that they are. And the last one of where to go kind of from here with this is, is do the next best thing you know to do. It's, you don't need the silver bullet. It's not, not everything happens at once. 
Not everything gets fixed at once. Not everything gets accomplished at once. Just do the next best thing you know to do. Because it's what we do with our imperfections. Being fatherly is about that. Guys, I am just, I am humbled to be in the midst of so many amazing men. I truly am. And I'm not saying you're amazing because of your performance. It's because of how you handle yourself as followers of Jesus. When things don't go right, how you stay committed, it's an honor. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for our dads. Thank you for those who are fatherly towards us. God, we pray that um, you, would, you would bless them. Uh, God, that you would, that all, who, all that they are around and influencing and walking alongside would be blessed by them because of you. Lord, we, we thank you for showing us the way, the way, the truth, the life that is Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Hey, everyone. My name is Carrie, and I'm the youth minister here at Our Savior Lutheran Church. I want to welcome you to worship and let you know what's happening in OSLC life. VBS is only a few short weeks away, and we want you and your family to join us either on June 28th and 30th or June 29th and July 1st here at our Tacoma campus. Our VBS theme is treasured as we embark on an epic quest to discover how valuable we are to God. Our evening VBS will be from 6 to 8 p.m., and there are a few spots open, but it's filling up fast, so don't miss out. Remember that each family needs to be accompanied by at least one adult, and registration can be found at oslc.com slash VBS. We are so glad you came to worship with us today. For more info on all the other exciting ministries happening at Our Savior, check out our central hub at oslc.com or download the OSLC app at oslc.com slash app. As we go today, let's thank God that He is our eternal Father and that His love for us never ends as adopted sons and daughters of the King. Remember that He's with us this week as we love God, love people, and live like Jesus. I'm ready for VBS. Uh, how about you? Yeah? Hey, uh, no, you are loved, you are treasured, and if you are available, if you, your kids, your grandkids, your neighbors, we still have spots, all right? So check it out, oslc.com. I cannot reiterate it enough, coming out of sort of what, what I'm calling pandemic isolation, how good it is just to have opportunities to come together safely and wisely like, uh, like VBS. So uh, if you want to check that out, do so. We also have a virtual option coming up in August for you and your neighborhoods. Maybe, maybe you live... Uh, uh, more remotely, especially those of you online, we want to make it accessible online later this summer for you to invite your neighbors to your place or to a public place so you can park and do the same, all right? It's all about sharing the love of Jesus with others, all right? Hey, next week, kicking off a series on Philippians. Any of us need to find joy? Yeah, 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 uh, Philippians. It's all about joy. We're going to dig into it, bring a Bible, bring a friend, Excited to be there with you this summer. All right, hey, let's stand as we are sent. We are sent. You and I, we are sent with the love of Jesus to live out the love of Jesus with people. So go with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his love and his favor and give you his peace that surpasses all understanding now and forever. Amen. Amen. Close.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. May God be with you. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.